So when we talk about how hurricanes can be so destructive, we kind of can categorize their, where their destruction comes from. And actually this kind of semantics gets down to, um, if you followed after the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, and I'm sure that it was similar with other major hurricanes, but when insurance companies get involved, they will, um, when it comes time for you to be uh, reimbursed for your loss, it depends on what your loss was due to. So for instance, one a specific thing that hurricanes bring with them is winds. And the winds um, are associated with that crazy central low pressure. And um, actually winds are how we categorize our hurricanes. And winds are closest, remember, to the eye of the hurricane. And they start to, winds start to get less intense as you get in there at the outer part of the spiral rain bands. Um, and winds inside of the eye are very um, calm, like inside the eye. It's kind of crazy, kind of creepy. Another thing, actually, that brings a lot of destruction during a hurricane is just the heavy rain that's associated with those big old spiral rain bands. Now, what's happened as these um, hurricanes have been out over whatever ocean they formed over is they have basically soaked up um, warm moist air and that warm moist air is condensed so basically they have a whole bunch of rain to go ahead and dump wherever they wherever they end up landing as they travel or as they go um, north or poleward north in our case so they go toward the poles and they cool down you're going to get this this uh, precipitation fall out of the system so actually the flooding from the heavy rain associated with the hurricane can be go inland a fair bit and be very problematic. I mentioned tornadoes actually can be embedded in those spiral arms. Tornadoes are also just, um, where if you look at the eye, now the inside of the eye is calm, but the eye that is surrounded by what we call the eye wall, and I kind of drew this a while back. Let me go ahead and draw it again. Okay, if this is my eye, it's nice and calm in there. But outside the eye, we have, and these are all thunderstorms. And remember, thunderstorms um, can spawn tornadoes. So we have tornadoes in the eye wall, and we also have tornadoes in the spiral rain bands. Um, what they found is that we have the most tornadoes in the forward right moving quadrant. Um, a fourth thing that can really be destructive associated with a hurricane, something called storm surge. Now, storm surge is only associated with when the hurricane um, transitions from the ocean to land. It's when it hits landfall. So what storm surge is, is basically we have this, um, this system that is whipping around, you know, has fast moving winds and basically that wind is picking up a wall of water with it where it intersects with the ocean. And that wall of water then, um, at the time of landfall, is swept up onto land and it basically increases the sea levels. That's what storm surge is. It's a wall of water that hits the land. And here in a minute, um, well, I guess not in a minute, when we talked about categorizing um, hurricanes from Cat 1 to Cat 5, we still, I don't know if you remember, but storm surges, um, if you have a Category 5 hurricane, storm surge, you're talking about, is it 5 feet? Um, or was it 5 meters? It must have been, I don't know. But um, the, the higher the category of the storm, the greater the storm surge. I have some pictures showing you kind of how storm surge would work. So again, it's just at landfall. And if you kind of uh, read up on Hurricane Katrina during or probably more likely afterwards, you know it's the storm surge that actually um, kind of, um, well, it was a lot of things, I think, but storm surge didn't help any. Um, the storm surge is most intense on the right side. Now kind of make a mental note of that and kind of compare that to the figure coming up. And that has to do with the fact that it, there's a central low pressure that um, basically we have um, wind whipping around it like this. And if this is our landfall, then can you see where this right here is going to get hammered? Okay, so storm surge is most 
is, is storm surge is most predominant on the right. So here's the um, showing uh, a hurricane headed this way. I don't know if you can see this. This is the arrow. And it is showing, or you can imagine that uh, since we have central low pressure, we have counterclockwise movement here. And so actually these arrows are kind of indicating that counterclockwise movement. So basically, as this hurricane hits landfall, um, we have a sweep of wall of water here. Okay. So what that water, let me go ahead and raise this. For instance, if we kind of, oops, go back. If we kind of compare it to high tide, now clear back in unit one we talked about something called high tide. Remember high tide is when the, um, we get high tide, um, we get high tide every time the, that part of the earth passes the moon, or as the earth rotates on its axis it swings past the moon. But normal high tide might have this amount of difference. Okay, um, Compare that to storm surge, and it's significantly higher. But again, it depends upon the category of the storm. So here, finally, are some pictures from Hurricane Katrina. Now, um, I would encourage you to uh, check out the course homepage for some special videos on hurricanes, including one just dedicated to Hurricane Katrina. So these will be full-length videos um, from um, uh, Films on Demand. So Hurricane Katrina, all right. Now the difference here is this was caused from storm surge. That's why I kind of introduce it here and in the course. And this is caused from wind damage. Again, you know, as I understand insurance, and I'm not an insurance person, um, your insurance would cover you perhaps for wind damage, but not for storm surge. So just to kind of look again at why we get the storm surge predominantly on the right side, and to kind of put some numbers with it. So for instance, if this uh, system is moving about uh, 50 kilometers per hour, so that's about 25 miles per hour approximately, in that direction, and let's just then say that the wind is whipping, um, in general, um, uh, 175 kilometers per hour. Okay, so it's going 175 kilometers per hour like this, right? So basically, we can add um, we can add the movement of the storm and the um, we can add the movement of the storm and the swirling of the wind together on this side. So 50 plus 175 is 225 kilometers per hour. And then over on this side, what we need to do basically is subtract the, um, the sweeping of the water from the movement of the hurricane. So over here, it is only running um, 125 kilometers per hour. So it's going to be much stronger over here. And I don't know if you can kind of see, probably can't. I might need to bring, bring the book out. But this is the coastline right here. So if, uh, you know, it might be hard to predict. We're going to talk about tracking and predicting landfall here in a minute. But over here is where they are going to have their strongest storm surge.